Thank you all for coming. This should be a very interesting presentation. This is Ray Kelly, and Ray is a member of the Railway Historical Society for the O&W. He's retired from the DOT, and I'll let you tell the rest. Uh, Welcome. Thank you, for everyone, for coming. My name is Ray <coughs> Kelly, and I am retired from the DOT in Newburgh, which is how I first found out about the trolley in Newburgh, and also the one that went from Middletown to, uh, to Goshen. So we're going to begin. The first, we're going to start with a small introduction on how trolleys began. Trolleys in Orange County, a brief introduction on that, and then we'll start our journey into Newburgh and then on to Walden. So these are all the people that have helped. Mr. Doug Barbario is right here. He's my mentor at the o and Society. Okay. All these people help. There's probably a lot more too. Okay. So this is 1857. This picture was taken, and it's a reenactment of the first what we would call trolley. <laughs> and all it was was just a wagon being pulled by horses. Then in 1832, Irish American. John Stevenson founded the New York and Harlem 4th Avenue line, the first streetcar system in the world. Metro North Railroad, the train that goes from Port Jervis to Hoboken and trace its roots to this early drawn horse line. So this was taken after 1832 because in 1860 they put rails on the street in New York City, Manhattan. That was the first place to have that done. So this is a picture, a common picture, I don't know if it was in Fort New York, Alabama, or Washington, or Auburn, but no matter what, this is the most important piece of equipment for a horse drawn line, the horses. These horses were well trained, they were like police and fire horses, they were not, you know, some nags down the street, they were well, well kept for. This was the next important thing, along with the car and then these guys. These guys can be replaced easily. So this wasn't just in America where we had, you know, the horse drawn lines. Here we are in Finland, Berlin, London. And no matter where you are, if you're in New York, Alabama, Washington, or Helsinki, or Berlin, or London, that's the front of the horse. <laughs> and that's the back of the horse. Yeah, we know what the back looks like. We know where we're going. Please sign in. Please sign in in the book. So depending on the size of a horse, they can eat 30 to 50 pounds of food a day and drink 5 to 7 gallons of water. Approximately two-thirds of this intake was turned into waste. I read that it's peak. The city of Boston could have 200,000 horses on the street at one time. Oh so there had to be a better way. <laughs> so the first electric railway was in a suburb of Berlin, which I cannot pronounce, and it's like a month or two months away. It would have happened in 1881. It was the Siemens Company, and they are still in business. Yes, they are. So this is progression of how trolleys started. First, the, tr the power came from the tracks. That was in Berlin. And then the Russians saw what was going on. They said, well, we can top that. And they had the overhead line with this T-bar. And the Germans said, oh yeah? We're going to come up with the wheel. <laughs> so then, in America, this was going on too. This wasn't just in Europe. This, this trolley business, electric traction. Cleveland, Ohio. Now, this isn't exactly right, but they had this spring to keep the tension, to keep the pole to the wire. But they also had this system underneath, this trowel system, which I don't really understand, and this didn't last very long. And then in Richmond, Virginia, was the first true modern trolley car made uh, system ran by a Dr. Frank Sprague. He invented it. He's the father of modern traction. <clears throat> so there was the Vanderpool system and there was the Sprague system. I really can't tell. I don't know the difference between them. Um, I, I, 
figure it'd be like back in the day when it had VHS and Beta. VHS came out ahead. There was nothing wrong with Beta, but for some reason the Sprague system came out better. So the first successful electric trolley line was uh, in America was built in 1884 in Cleveland, and it quickly failed. Its first successful line was in Richmond, Virginia. Trolleys were widespread throughout the Midwest, Upper Midwest, through the Great Lakes region, into New York and New England, then down to Washington and Baltimore. The greatest concentration of trolley lines was in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Iowa, the Rust Belt. In the South, Electric lines became sparser and animal-powered cars were still used, but larger communities had electric-powered trolleys. The further west you went in the country, lines were less frequently found except for cities. So, steam railroads connected the country. The electric trolley lines and the interurbans, they filled it in. By the mid-1890s, many smaller cities in the Midwest and the East, Middletown, Newburgh, Kingston, began to have electric trolley service. So if your small city back then didn't have electric trolley service, you were like, a bunch of, bunch of hicks. <laughs> By the 1920s, if your car, if your city still had electric trolley service, you were known as a Tunerville. They didn't last very long, but they were very important for the, for the economy, for, for the whole transportation. It opened up a new world for people. So Chicago had 27 trolley and interurban lines serving the city and suburbs. Indianapolis was also a major trolley center. The state of Ohio had the most miles of trolley and interurban tracks. Closer to home, Syracuse had seven lines. One went to Rochester, another to Utica. Using different systems, you could ride trolley cars from New York to Illinois almost a thousand miles. Now that doesn't mean like you'd have to say there was a trolley here and there was none to Walden, you'd have to take a stagecoach, but then you could take a trolley to Newburgh and then you take the ferry to Beacon and then you could go. People would do this, that was a thing to do. Trolley rides, train rides, just a big loop around the county or something, which we'll take a look at in a second. Uh, in 1910, the trolley ride was taken to Chicago to Albany and then a steamship to New York and then electric cars to Boston. In 1911, Another gentleman rode trolleys from New York City to Portland, Maine, arriving 25 hours later. And by 1917, every state had a trolley system, and there was approximately 18,000 miles of track in the USA. So trolley, so these things are running great during the week. They're making money. But during the weekend, people aren't going to work, so they're thinking, oh, what are we going to do? So they, would, they came up with this. They would build bowling, uh, bowling zoos, bowling, <laughs> building zoos, amusement parks, vaudeville houses, bowling alleys, skating rinks, motion picture theaters, dance halls, race tracks, boxing matches, baseball fields, anything they could think of to get people to ride, and they'd usually be midpoint of the lines. Now, cars could also be rented for funerals and to visit cemeteries. It sounds more than for us, but, you know, back then, people, you know, there was no air conditioning. People would just take a trolley ride to cool off. Wedding parties with scenic locations along the lines were also popular. Masons, Odd Fellows, Moose, Elk, and other civic organizations were also given discount fares. So this is from the Middletown. It says Walk Hill Transit Company, but we will use it. Unfortunately, it's not clear. Don't talk to the motor man. Any accident may happen. <laughs> and here's an accident. Now, this is in Southern California. I've been to all these places, and way back when, this was, uh, they filmed a lot of silent films here. So I don't know if this was a stage crash or a silent movie or a real crash, but these were very common. Was that a motor car? Yeah, it was a car. Oh, wow. That was a car. Well, it's happening today with trains. Right. Yeah, it still it still happens. Still happens today. Yeah. Strange. So, with as with any new technology, there were many urban myths with electric cars. Among them were, (laughs) if you stare at the sparks coming off the trolley wire, you'll go blind. (laughs) There was fear that watches would stop working if you wore them during an extended ride. And this is my favorite. 
Men would enter trolleys first so they could absorb the electromagnetic oh, currents so ladies wouldn't be exposed to them. <laughs> this is Victorian times, so things were different. People didn't know. President Harrison was the first president to have electricity in the White House. He and his wife were petrified to turn on the lights, and they would have the servants do it. They just didn't know. People did not know. Okay, so here we are in 1903 in Orange County. So here's Newburgh, and here's Walden, where we're going to go. Now, I have to explain a few things here. We'll use Montgomery because it's easier to see. Notice how the new Berkshire Kopchetting Turnpike 17K. See how it's blue? Mm -hmm. See how the Little Britain Road to Campbell Hall is blue? 94 is blue. That means the state has taken over the road. So from Montgomery out <coughs> to Blumenberg, it's not blue. It's still a private road. There's a lot going on. The state is buying up all these turnpikes, private turnpikes, private roads. The society I want, the O and W, they're double tracking their line from Cornwall to the county, through Middletown, up to Kadosia, so they can tap into the Scranton coal mines and come down. The line that we call the the uh, the Metro North line. Over here, it's not built yet, but that's in the plan. So all this is going on. The state now, the state is under incredible pressure from a newfangled machine. <laughs> these people were tired of riding on these crappy roads. You got to do something about it. We're paying taxes. Anybody want to guess what kind of machine this was? Bicycle. The bicycle. Oh, it's kind of interesting. Bicycles. <laughs> Sounds like today with the roads now, they're playing by crappy roads, we need a state to do stuff. And taxes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's strange. <laughs> right. Bicycles are the reason the roads in the country, not just here, but throughout the country, because I watched a few other trolley shows, and guys have said the same thing, and they showed the different bicycles. These guys are the reason why the roads were improved in America. Bicycle clubs. <laughs> Okay, so now we're finally going to get to Orange County and see what's going on here. So the first electric railway was in Middletown. It connected Middletown and Goshen and it opened on May 8th, 1894. Shortly after that, June 9th, 1894, the line started here in Newburgh at the ferry terminal and by the summer of 94, it made it to Orange Lake, and by the spring of 95, to Walden. And then Port Jervis. Port Jervis had a trolley system also. That just served the city. Now, everybody was asking before about trolley into urban, tram. They're all basically the same term. It's like you say, I'm getting in the car now. You know, you might have a truck, you might have a suburban, whatever, you're getting in the car. So, tram is you. Tr Trolley is mainly used in America and Canada. Trams were everywhere else. So none of them were especially profitable. The Port Jervis line, they opened in 1898, and they were the last to close, I believe, in 28. And the day they closed, the customers didn't know, and neither did the employees, because they showed up and the place was shut down. By 1905, the Middletown line had changed hand three times. The Newburgh line was profitable up until 1912, but their profits were made on awful labor relations and their safety wasn't much better. So again, we see all this stuff with, uh, as I was just saying, you know, the, the new train coming through here and then the O&W and the bicycle people, all kinds of stuff going on. Now another thing that was going on is steam companies, steam trains hated trolley companies, electric lines because it took a lot of time and a lot of power for to get these trains going. With an electric system, you just throw the switch and off you go. So does everybody remember when the train ran from, you know, through Orange County, when the Erie ran? Mm -hmm. Monroe, and then into Chester, and then I, for the sake of argument, to, if there was a lot of passenger service, these guys could verify. How, how much did they have? They didn't have much, right, passenger service? They, they had quite a bit. Oh, did they? They, they had quite a bit. I'm wrong. Thank you, Doug. So we'll throw that out the window. 
They still hated their guts, though, because they had because they were competition. Now, it's hard to see, but right here, if we could follow this line, it says proposed interval trolley company, and it stops here. And what that was was another company was going to go through the county and connect the Middletown branch or the Middletown line with the Newburgh line. So these were privately owned yes. trolleys? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's why they went out of business. No. Yeah. So it stopped here, right in Salisbury Mills. And the reason for that was they weren't sure. Some of the guys, some of the investors wanted to go this way. They continue out 94. I don't know if you're familiar with 94, but when you get into New Windsor, it breaks off to the left. Mm -hmm. And it's Quasaic Avenue there. And if you keep going straight, it's Blooming Grove Turnpike. That's the way they wanted to go. And then they would go over what is now 9W River Road and then up to the ferry station here. These other guys were like, no, no, no. Let's cut through the woods by Jackson Avenue. If you're familiar with Jackson yeah. Avenue is, get onto County 20, Boris Mills Road, and then we go to Firth Cliff and West Newburgh for the Erie, and then go up. So by the time they figured that out, they lost money. And the reason they were trying to do this was because in 1903, right here, from Broadway down to Lake Street to the city line, the trolley company built this little spur. So they, that's what they were arguing about. Let's go this way, let's go this way. And another guy says, let's go up 32, Windsor Turnpike. They kept arguing, arguing, lost all their money, never done. But this, this was really going to be done because it was right on the map. And around 1912, another line was going to go from Middletown to Montgomery on 211 and then into Walden. That, that never worked out either. A couple more thoughts were from Goshen out 207. Well, I'm using our, our roads, so we have a reference. 207 to 416 to Montgomery and then to Walden or right out 207. None of those. Now, as I was saying, railroad construction possibly, this is speculation on my part because the, the trains just did not like the trolleys. Down here on the lower left, this is the ONW in Rock Tavern. This way's the Cornwall, this way's the Middletown, this way's the Newburgh. This bridge was built in 1904. Prior to that, you had to cross a grade here. There's no way a trolley company is going to get a car over this or they hassle them so much to build by them. It could be done, but it was just too much, too much. This is old 94. This way is where the viaduct is, the world famous movie viaduct. Current 94 is over here. And this monstrosity was built in uh, First Cliff by the LNW, and there's no way you can get a trolley through that. You can get cars through there. Now, that's all speculation on my part, but it seems every way the trolley would have wanted to go, Railroads would build something there to blunt them, kind of. Now these two would have made a lot more sense, especially this one. Walden to Montgomery. Went down uh, Walnut Street, right along the river. They would have been there. Now this one, I don't understand. They wanted to build one here to uh, Pine Bush from Walden. And I'm governor, Mr. Odell, he was the former governor and he bought the line. And he says the ex-governor is not in favor of building on tracks on the public highways, but would prefer his own road. That's quite a stretch to build your own right away. And the reason I'm curious on why he would pick Pine Bush is because if you look at all these, here's Newburgh, Cornwall, Washingtonville, Chester, Goshen, Middletown, Walden, and Montgomery, they're all, they're all incorporated. What you don't see on this map is there's no Maybrook. Maybrook isn't incorporated until 1906, I believe. And there's no Pine Bush incorporated. So if it's not an incorporated village, he must have had some scheme going on with somebody to want to come here. Okay. Well, the horse drawn trolley began service on December 23rd, 1886. The Newburgh Electric Railway began service June 9, 1894. The 
first car was named the Odell. Benjamin Odell was a congressman for the area at the time. He was also the former governor in New York, and he bought the line in 06. People think that he made money, but he did not. Um, until 1912, which we'll see. 1906 to 1912, he was making money. Tracks were later expanded to Orange Lake in 94, July of 94. On May 29, 1895, the final rails were laid into the village of Walden, and it was renamed the Wal Newburgh Walden Traction Company. The first car ran on June 1st. Trolley Company rebuilt and enlarged the amusement park at Orange Lake in 1903. In 1903, the line was now 16.49 miles long, including double track sidings and turnout. In the peak year of 1912, there were 20.5 miles of track. By 1922, bits and pieces of the system were shutting down. On March 31st, 23, the entire system was terminated. Buses then provided public transportation, and that service quickly went bankrupt. A motor trolley bus and limited trolley cars were used until possibly 1927 during the summer season from the waterfront to Orange Lake. So this was the routes. The first route was uh, the original route was just along Broadway out to where Rite Aid is. Back then it was known as Cross Street. From Broadway to Bayview Terrace, that's out on the Heights. That's where the Orange County Fair used to be. Renwick Street branch from Liberty Street to the Corsair Bridge, the old bridge that's shut down now before they built 9W. <coughs> Excuse me. Orange Lake Division from West Newburgh to Orange Lake was 4.6 miles long. Uh, the Walden Division from Orange Lake to Walden was 5.3 miles long. The line that went from the Bonville Tree was a private right of way for the last mile, Old Bonville Road. And the section of DuPont Avenue that we know, when you make the left at Wisner to go to South Street, that was a private right of way for the trolley. The line also had two wooden trestles with a total length of 2,165 feet. In, in mid-1903, tracks were laid down Lake Street from Broadway to Machado's Lake, and from Broadway to Landis Street to South Street, Liberty Street, and then onto the Bonville Tree. And Broadway was also double tracked for 2.2 miles. So this, these guys were doing quite well for a while. So in 1894, they had two box cabs, two combo passenger express cars, three freight cars, a snow plow, sweeper, and 17 open cars. Their no, non motorized units were eight box cars, two combo passenger freight cars, and five service cars. So you can see in 1912, in the peak year, there were 35 passenger cars, tra 12 trail passenger cars. They were just towed them along. Five preservers cars, three combo cars, and two snow plows. Okay. So this, this I got from the internet, obviously, and I can't remember the guy's name. I'm sorry, I, I pilfered your stuff without <laughs> giving you props. This is the order number for the trolley, and this is who ordered it, the Newburgh Street Railway. But we'll see that it's Newburgh Walden. We'll take a minute at that, look at that. So it was in New York. They ordered two of them, a passenger and a baggage car. I think this means double-ended, I'm not sure. I don't know what the deck means, or the 20 OB. So since they ordered two, 51 plus, that's car number 52, and they got this in March of 95. So they didn't make it to Walden yet. They didn't make it till May, so they purchased this before then, this car. And this is a, a, a true freight car. We'll see this later in Walden. Oops, okay. So this is not a Newburgh car, but this is just to, to use an example. So they could put snow plows on them, sweepers, sickle bars, sprayers, they could do a lot with these things. Sometimes they take old beat up cars and instead of just tossing them, they convert them into work, work uh, trucks. This is the Bro Company. They were a major trolley manufacturer. They were out of Philadelphia. The order number, now, by now they're Orange County Traction. That's what they, their last name was. They bought 10 of them. And this is from November of uh, 1906. Here's a few more they bought. I don't have any pictures of them, but as you can see that they were doing quite well. January of 02.
So here we are with a car that's going to uh, Orange Lake. And these cars, were, I went to the tr uh, Kingston Trolley Museum to get some information. This, they said that these cars are really hard to find because it was an early car, first of all, and the, and the rapid introduction of new cars and technology, they would just get rid of these things. Farmers would buy these and they would um, either you just drag them into fields or put them on wheels and let the animals eat out of them. So not many were left. And I think, you know, we're going to be on YouTube, so I'm probably going to get heck for this one. I think this was a way when they reached the switch so they could drop it in the trap and move it, I think. This is a great picture because we know who everybody is. This is Mr. Irvin Whitaker. This is his grand, his son and his daughter. I got this picture from his great grandson, Jerry Whitaker, who was a fireman in Newburgh, in the city of Newburgh. So he grew up to either be the fire chief or the police chief, this young man. I did the show in Baldwin a few years ago, and the guy said, can you put this in? This is my whatever he was, I forget, his relative from way back when. He used to drive a trolley car, that's what exactly said. He drove the trolley car, and then when they went out of business, he started to drive the bus. And this was their last gasp to try to keep people and going. So this is just the bus that they could ride on the tracks. Dodge. So, yep. <laughs> so it went to at least 1927. Now I'm going to use a lot of postcards in this presentation and sometimes I get my best ones when I visit my sister in Wisconsin. So I'm looking through one of the places and I saw this card, what I thought was this card. I was like, oh my God. But it wasn't. This, what this card is, is a blank. So Middletown could get it and they could put in Horton Hospital and Thrall Library and Port Jervis could put in there, you know, whoever. It, it, it's a template. But what it does show is the spray system. It's how up here the dial, which would keep this more pressure to keep it on the wire. So this pamphlet is from 1918. It shows you know everything you can see by trolley. The park at Orange Lake, the Bombville tree, believe it or not. Washington's headquarters, Downing Park. And we'll take a look at these pictures as we get going, as we get out of town. <clears throat> so, in 1903, the fares were a nickel in the city, 15 cents to Orange Lake, and 30 cents to Walden. So in 20 years, by 1923, they were allowed to raise the rates two cents. <laughs> that was it. People were, and, the, and because it wasn't subsidized by the government, what do you expect? So the trolley ran from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every 15 minutes in the city of Newburgh and hourly to Walden. All employees worked 10 hour days. There were 75 employees, including officials. Inspectors made two and a quarter a day. Conductors made $1.50 to $1.75. Motormen between $1.75 and $2. Cleaners made $1.25 a day. $1.19.03 would be worth $35.04 in 2024. So these guys were pretty well paid for the time. And I got these for one of my, my I believe my 60th birthday, Teresa? Yes. <laughs> Off the internet. Off the internet. There, we missed out by 15 years. Mm -hmm. So while the trolley cars were convenient, they could also be deadly. So a lot of dogs got killed by trolley cars, sadly. That's what these two were for. And this young boy in Walden got killed. This young man, Mr. Green, he was working for the trolley company and because of an accident where um, 
in front of Goodwill Firehouse. He lost his foot. So a trolley pole, this one just fell over for no reason. These guys were cooking it up. When I was looking for all these articles on Google, it was one from White Plains in 1905. Now White Plains, I don't really remember what the article said, how many lines they had, but they had several lines going into the city. And their banner was, great news, no one was killed last year in a motor electric car accident. And then the next day, well, some people were really hurt badly, but no one was killed. <laughs> and here's the story of the young man, Walter Green. He received a settlement about losing his foot, and the paper was waxing eloquently about how the trolley company was a bunch of losers. So, this gentleman, Mr. DeWitt, has applied for a position on our cars and given your name as a reference. Any information you can give us that was honesty, sobriety, and general character will be greatly obliged. So this is from Matawan, New York, which is Beacon. And note the date, 1904. Now, as they were saying with their labor strife, that's what we're going to look at next. 1904 strike. I think Mr. DeWitt was a scab, maybe. So this story is about a trolley strike, which was very convoluted. But back then, unions really stuck together. And that's what this was about. There was a strike in Walden at the, one of the plants. And they bust up. They didn't bust. They trained up scabs from New York. And by the time they found out, the trolley guys were like, what? These guys are union, they're, they're fellow union guys, we're not, and it was a whole rigmarole until they were kindly escorted back to Brooklyn. There was another strike in 1906. There was another strike in 1911. Now this one is legit, and I'll give you a reason why. Now this is from Middletown. June 6, 1906, Newburgh, five years later. So we're gonna, oh. in Middletown, the superintendent's name was Mr. William Martin. Keep that name in mind. So in Middletown, at this time, 1906, there's a few automobiles and the cops are giving the guys a lot of tickets for speeding. And apparently, I'm trying to use, oh, kick. Automobile drivers are kicking to the police. I guess that's complaining that wait a minute, these trolley cars are flying by. You gotta do something about that. You're giving us tickets. So they climbed on board. And the first guy that got arrested was the superintendent, Mr. William Martin, who was going twenty five miles an hour and the speed limit is twelve. Oh, he was speeding. So let's fast forward five years to Newburgh, June eleventh, nineteen eleven. Superintendent is the issue. Geez, who could be the superintendent? Mr. William Martin. And this is hard to read, but Mr. Martin got into an altercation, a discussion with one of the employees where he punched him in the face. <coughs> Mr. Martin was taken to the Newburgh Hoosgow, and everybody's happy until the next day when they showed up for work. And not only was Mr. Martin there, but he was given a promotion, which didn't sit well. So it was a big strike. And this strike was, unlike the other two, there was sabotage. The sheriff's deputies had a ride on the cars for threats against the trolley guys that they brought in. It was ugly. It got really ugly. And when we get to Montgomery, out um, the Montgomery Newburgh line, we'll <clears throat> see how ugly it got. Finally, we're going to get going. First, I got to have a drink of water. Okay, so this is the Union Station. Over here is the Pizza and Taco Place up on Water Street. Do you know when this was taken down, Doug? I don't know. Okay. Where this box car is, it, over here, we're using the pointer. That's where the trolley line started, right here. This line marks the trolley line, just dotted line. So we go up 2nd Street. Little bit on water. 
double track going up Colden and then out Broadway. So here's a Dayliner ad. The first thing they say, direct connection at Newburgh with the Orange County Traction Company for, tra for service to Orange Lake and Walden. 1919, look at all the people getting ready to go on the trolley. This is 2nd and Front Street. Points of interest. Downing Park, Washington's headquarters. How to get to West Point. Orange Lake, Academy of Music. The Bombville Tree, Cohen's Opera House, Broadway Theater. So we're down here, and as we all know, this lovely patch of nothing is urban removal. Good way of putting it. Right. So look at all the people Holy coming shit. up, coming up from. They didn't just come up from New York. They would come from Albany. They would come from. Kingston, that would come from Poughkeepsie, but where would they go? Orange Lake Amusement Park. There's a ferry terminal. I never saw it. Too bad. It was beautiful. I, I, I was told. I was told, man. And that's today's view on the bottom. So you can date pictures in Newburgh because of the wires, the overhead wires. Bell House, electric cars to Washington's headquarters past the door. Mm. And there's a trolley going up 2nd Street. Oh, yeah. This was called Ferry Square. Hard to believe that building was there. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is late because it says auto bus and trolley company. And trolley stop, I mean. And the different views. This is just unbelievable. And it gets worse as we go through along. So imagine the poor horses having to climb up this. Second Carpenter Streets. Yeah, they were building the line in 1894. Mm -hmm. Keystone Cops, I, I love those buildings. <laughs> A lot of pictures were taken from Third Street for some reason. I don't know why. This is a 1999 circus parade. The streets are, these, when they put these down, it's not cobblestone. People say cobblestone's not, they're Belgian blocks. Again, the schoolmakers, I, I've never been there, but I was told this was the Macy's of. No, yeah. Of the and Hudson the, Valley. And the railroad Stairs went too. through the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To go from one end, you'd have to go, like if the second floor here and the train went through, you'd have to go down to the first floor and then go up. Oh, wow. Yeah. In, on your bridge. The railroad went through the building? Shoot. Yeah, right yeah. through the building. This is the, this box is <clears throat> Caldwell Mower Company. That was a big manufacturer in, in Newburgh, Mower. For the mowers. And you can see now the street is paved. Yeah. This one's really awful. Uh, it's geez. unbelievable. Wow. They tore all, all that down. All the shops. Mm -hmm. Did all that industry and local business. Yeah. Wow. And this is the Hudson Fulton celebration, on. This is this picture is from my friend Joe Santa Croce, and he, if you go on YouTube, he has a YouTube video on this. It's unbelievable. It's really great. On the Hudson, uh, type in Hudson Fulton Celebration, 1909. This is Water Street and Fourth. Now Colden, 
we'll see in a little bit. That was rerouted when they blew up the city down here, the East End. Fifth Street. So Urban Renewal not only blew up the buildings, but the streets too. There is no more Fifth Street. Sadly, this house burned down. They not completely. Rebuilt, they rebuilt it. Yeah, they, they did. It. Yeah, it yeah. Didn't, I shouldn't say burned down. It burned up. Yeah. They, they did save it. Another view. Yeah, we're going to head out to the uh, <clears throat> Bonville tree. This is a new picture. Don't know where he is, but he's, in, he's on the Bonville Road. And this one's new too. And there's the Bonville tree. When did that come down? Oh, I forget, Doug. Not that yeah, long. No, no, not that long. No, no. It was recently. See the, the, yeah, to the bottom. Yeah. He's dead. Here's, here's a DOT story. See this pole here? When the tree was falling down for years, it was yeah. falling down. People were like, we've got to cut it down. They, they, they didn't want to cut it down. Either Orange and Rockland or the company, the power company from you guys out here. I'm not Central Hudson. No, not Central. The other guys. Nice. Nice, yeah. Nice, yeah. yeah. They donated this pole. But we, the DOT, had to truck it, so put on our tractor trailer, and there's people watching all over. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, oh, it was unbelievable. Oh, they're so saving the tree. The guys putting it up, a branch fell down, almost killed everybody. Oh, like, oh, Let's yeah. get out of here. <laughs> so then they finally, they, sadly, they had to take it down. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was a hazard. Okay, so we're up here, and we're gonna come back into Newburgh. Fort Street again, and Schoolmakers, which we just talked about, and around 1900, I stole this from Central Hudson, and that was a big deal, imagine, imagine that, 15 watt bulb, and you're like, God. just got this one. This is a 1960 article on the Hudson uh, with the picture of the celebration, but they're, what they're talking about how this is in the mid-60s, how this is going to be gone soon. Mm -hmm. So here's another horse. So the courses would come up and they'd have teams, or they'd have relay stations, I should say. They'd stop because there was no way the horses were going to make it all the way up. I think they'd stop on Grand Street too and then at their headquarters at 244 Broadway. You can see how the street's been rerouted here. It could now come straight down instead of on the same. They made them better, right? Yeah, it's definitely better. Look at everything they got rid of. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Oh now. my gosh. Oh yeah. Clinton Square. Clinton statue. I want you to keep an eye on all these people because when we get to Orange Acre, I'm going to say something. I did this show on Walden years ago, and some guy called me a bad name because he didn't believe me. <laughs> so look at all the people. Walden. Look at the people. Where is that? It's gone. Oh, so you can see. It certainly is gone. See where the, I should have stood here and taken the picture. Cause that's where the road used to go. The street, actually, it's not a road, yeah. it's a street. Yeah. So this is out on Fullerton Avenue now. I think Van Ness Street, I'm not sure. No, Bush Avenue and uh, 3rd Street. 3rd is, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right, let me ask you a question. If it was tough for the horses to take the trolley up the hill, how tough was it to come down? Down the hill. Yeah. Down the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Because who's going to gonna do the break? Yeah. That had to be a problem. I mean, because they've got all the weight. I wonder if they had enough horses where they would just bring the horses by themselves and leave the cars. Like, yeah. I mean, I, 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 all the times I've seen the show, they're yeah, just you know, 
That's right. I never thought of that. How do you come down the hill? You're right. I never thought of that. Maybe the horse jumps in with the people who <laughs> <and> go <laughs> ride down the hill. I, mean, I, mean, I never you know? thought of that. And Newburgh is all hills. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Coming down the hill would be a problem. Little town hill. Yeah, some of them. There's a few more of uh, Clinton Street and uh, that's Clinton Square, excuse me, Clinton Square. Yeah. There's others. And that's Burger's Furniture with the awning there. Okay. And another view, the 1909 celebration. A few more. Some beautiful buildings. Yep. Yeah. What's that building on the lower right? This? Yeah, that, that one down there. That was a bank. That's a bank? It was. Shoot. Yeah. Highland Quisaic National Bank. Oh, wow. So we're back over in here. Over here, actually, somewhere in here. Colon Street got wiped out, too. Mm, well. Why'd they not, why'd they take all that down? Like Progress. <laughs> Progress. Like they're going backwards. Oh, yeah. it, almost, it almost seems like it, 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 this isn't a political. We can't get political yeah, here. We can't, <laughs> we cannot get political so here. So much business. Yeah. A lot of business. Wow. Lot of people's livelihoods too. Who own the business? Yes. Colden Street. Looking north. It's car number twenty-two coming up Colden Street. That's a great shot. Summer 2016, they're repaving Broadway. And there's the tracks. Yeah. Oh, okay, so this is 1922. And they're going to go out of business in a year. One car, two cars, three cars, four cars, or five cars. So the last guy is down here. He's coming up. And these, well, these buildings are gone too. Where the police station is and the firehouse, mm. gone. Yeah. Okay, so we're over here. Gone. Yeah, oh. St. John's Church. Look at all the people out there. Yeah. Today's view. Mm. Academy Theater, gone. Mm -hmm. Fireman's Parade, we still have them. Oh. Lots of them. Broadway and Grand, about 1920. So if you've got a Fireman's Parade where that was showing, you can't stop the trolleys. Right? They can't run. So it's actually bad for business, depending on you know, if it's a weekend, because they can't run or make money. Yeah. These are soldiers returning from Europe after World War One as a trolley car. Same view. Okay. They're rehabbing this building. I don't know what they're making out of it now, but they're definitely working on it. One of a few survivors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Broadway and Crane look at north. Oh. We have a trolley car in front of the academy. That's a tough area right now. City Hall. Mm -hmm. I should have. These two built. I couldn't line this up because I didn't know. These two buildings are gone. That's where the key bank is now, the building I was just talking about. I should have moved up a little bit. But there's a circus, another circus parade on Broadway. You can see this is put in 1910 because there's two sets of tracks. So, Ray, if they had the fairgrounds in Newburgh originally, would the circus train have come up on the West Shore? Probably, yeah. And then they would transport everybody up? Yeah, I would think so. Paving Broadway, and there's your blocks. They're not. That out. looks like fun. Yeah, that yeah. looks like a party. Oh, shoot. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 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 Don't know where these are. I can't line them up. 
but he's stuck. Now, a few things, you know, again, again with the trial, you know, oh, it's, a, it's so romantic. In the winter, you're stuck. In the summer, you might get hit by lightning. In the summer, the tracks, because they're lighter, they might spread and you might crash. In the winter, the tracks might shrink and you might crash. So it's just like, you know, we, we can't comprehend any more than they can comprehend driving a car that can go 90 miles an hour with no problem. Liberty Street, so the tracks are still in. The tracks are still in place. And this is uh, Mr. Rubin. Jacob Rubin was a very famous uh, photographer in Newburgh. And a lot of his uh, pictures became postcards. And when we get to Middletown, uh, Mr. Ketchum and Mr. Still, they were the same. They were prominent photographers in Middletown. Trolley cars on Renwick Street. That's the Renwick Street School. They're, they're rehabbing this too. Well, at least they let it stand. Mm -hmm. Liberty and Carson. And Liberty and Courtney. This church still is over here. We'll come back to Broadway, 1920. Chamber Street. Another view of the celebration. Now, one of the things that trolley companies had to do, they had to keep these, uh, another reason they lost money, they had to have a, their right of way over here, so you know it's like, I'm not exactly sure, say it's two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet. Well, there's a gap here, and they didn't have to maintain that. The city of Newburgh sued them. You know, this looks like garbage. It's not our problem. We're doing what the state says. The city of Newburgh lost. Trolley Company was right. They did not have to maintain inside here and put the bricks up and make it look pretty. Broadway and Chambers. Now, I don't think Broadway was done until 1910. Paved. So we're over here. Lander Street. Oh, they called that the cross town line, and it go off Broadway, down Lander, to South Street, and then back around to Liberty, and then out to the Bonville Tree. Way back there is a trolley car. That's when I bought that postcard coming down South Street. Those buildings are still up. Yeah. yeah. That's a Amazing. tough part of town. Very. <laughs> Broadway and Lander. It's tough too. There's Newburgh in the 50s, still an all American city. And this car. And another one, when we get to Walden, I'll tell you the story about these two cars. But here's some more urban removal. All this is gone, this whole block, gone. Gone. A true steamroller. Broadway and South Johnson, the armory. Old Market, whatever people remember it as. Another Hudson uh, Fulton celebration from the armory. He's around 1904 from the armory. You can see the trolley car back here. It's another one there. It's from South Miller. There's only one set of tracks, so I could figure that out. <laughs> Don't know where he is, but I knew what year. They have passing sightings? Yes. Yes, Doug. So here's the horses coming up to Boy Street. Mm -hmm. That's a long hill. Boy, that must have been tough. I yeah. and down, down the hill. Yeah. I never thought of that. No. And I've seen your programs. 
It's like, wow, how did it go downhill? Yeah. And the noise they made, the clop, the clop, the clop, the clop. In the 1911 strike, in another part of that newspaper, of course there's no trolleys, and they call them drummers. They were vendors back then, you call salesmen drummers. <clears throat> These guys are getting off the train and they gotta go to, you know, the other side of Newburgh. How are we gonna go? I'm not gonna walk up the hill with all this stuff. So people would race down there, just like Uber and Lyft with their surge pricing. And one guy was charging $3, $3 in 1911 to drive people up the hill from Newburgh in his uh, horse and wagon. And they do it. <laughs> he had no choice. Could be like 60 or $70 in today's, uh, based on what you've shown before. Talking about robbery. Yep. Broadway and William. For those that collect postcards, I was, I found out these ones with the white edges, they're not as desirable, but there's more of them. Uh, prior to 1915 are the ones you really want to get, and they were made in Germany. You know, something was going on in Germany in 1915, so we couldn't get postcards anymore. So they started making them in America, and they weren't near the quality that they are, they were in Germany. Broadway and Lutheran. Don't know where on Broadway. And these tracks, they're lighter than rail tracks. They're the same width. They're the same width, but they're lighter. About 40, 50 pounds? Yeah. Yeah. So this was the headquarters, 244 Broadway. You can see how it had this nice piece on the top. And the next. This is the beginning of the end for the Newburgh Trolley Company, Orange County Traction Company in 1912. In today's dollars, they lost over four million. <laughs> Was that accidental or? Nobody knows, Doug, nobody knows. The only thing that, I'm looking at hindsight, it wasn't during horse times because it was also a stable. And how many horses would have been killed? And they were probably showing off their equipment in front of the headquarters. And my friend Russ Nelson made this picture. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so here we are. And this is the spur line I was saying about down uh, Lake Street, yeah. New York 32, down to the New Windsor line where the other guys wanted to hook up and they never did. So the ice ponds down there, that was, they still make ice down there. I don't think they use the pond down there. But yeah, Machado. <laughs> yeah. It used to be a poorhouse, too. Yeah. There. The bogey, they called it. Yeah. So here we are at 17K and 9W, Robinson and <clears throat> Broadway. I don't think I'd want to stand there and try to get this picture today. Run over. <laughs> but it's 1926. And it's, the lines are still up, so the trolley's still running. They wouldn't leave those lines up if they weren't running. <coughs> that trolley all the way down. I was thinking that, Doug. Is that one all the way I'm down? I'm looking at one of both sides. One there. And, and one this there. One, yeah, yeah. Pretty close if you yeah. look where the tracks are going. Yeah. And it is summer. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to jump quite a bit. We're going to go out to... <coughs> About where the Rite Aid is, that area, DuPont Avenue, there's a lot going on here. First, where the Strook building is, over here, that was a car barn. Over here, in 1916 or 17, Doug, the Erie Bridge, mm. the Erie Railroad built a bridge here. And we're going to look at that and how that put another nail in the coffin of the trolley company. This is called Bellevue, we'll take a look at that. And this is where the um, <clears throat> firehouse is. And that was another amusement park. Right, well, you cut your point, right? That looks like they got a passing sign. Yeah, that, that, that's where the kid lost his leg, his foot. That's where the crash was. Okay. So we'll look at a few ads here. Mr. Harrison and his lime works. So he's got all kinds of stuff. Let's get to the good stuff. 
blasting powder, fuses, dynamite, and caps. Good shift on the electric railroad. <laughs> now remember we saw earlier the passenger combo car? So I'm riding from Newburgh to Walden with it, sitting on a case of dynamite. That sounds <laughs> really good. On an electric car that sparks. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. And they talk about these bicycle batteries. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's where his line. Yep. That's where his line works was. Right there, right here, and this is two reasons. Um, prior to electricity, you could see the horse exhaust in the street. <laughs> and over here, over here, you can see this is what the trolley company had to maintain. That's all they had to maintain. Now, as time went on, and these municipalities still didn't have you know paved streets and tin lizzies coming along, what are you going to drive tin lizzie on? This mud hole or this nice thing you're not supposed to be on? So they would drive on. And they would drive on that. The skinny little tires get caught in the rails, and then. And then uh, uh, Bellevue, a new suburb of Newburgh. Something that not just trolley companies or interurbans, but the city of New York. You look at a picture of like 170th Street in 1910, you think you're in Iowa, you know, except for the distance to seeing the buildings, there's nothing. Trolley companies would hook up and train companies would hook up with uh, real estate developers and we'd build tracks to nowhere except for we're going to build houses there. Now people can live in the houses and they can come to work. So that's how your suburbs were first built. So you got to remember too, Newburgh, west of 9W, really was farmland for quite some time. So this was what they were talking about, a suburb out in the middle of nowhere. Here it is. So this is what we call Wisner Avenue now. This is what we call DuPont. So all those houses in, the, in, the, in here, they were all company houses. They were hoping to build them for the guys that worked at Fabricoid. Right. So this is the little bridge I was talking about that'll be over here. This was built around 1916 or 17. This was a car barn at one time. Stroke. Okay, so this 19 set is 10. Uh, map. Let me back up a little. Back up. Okay. So this was the car barn in 1903. This is the car barn in 1910. Does anybody remember when <coughs> Pepsi was in here and those two big steel buildings they had? They looked like Quonset huts. That's what the, they were the trolley. <coughs> they were the car barns. DuPont. This was a private right of way. Years before before the city turned it over, you'd have to drive through Fabricoid to get to South Street. So, and this is what this said in 1935. It's, if you could see it down here. A few years ago, the section of South Bank, which passes through the Fabricoid plant, was deeded to the company by the city after the firm constructed a concrete highway over the former, formerly used trolley company for a track. So, the Dupont was private right away for the trolley company. And they were getting freight traffic in there? The trolley, yes. The trolley until company was hauling the freight until 1916 or 17. When the Erie got in there. This is a fabulous picture. Look at all the trolley cars on the DuPont. So this is DuPont going out to South Street now. These were the car barns. Yeah. Fabricoid, South Street, back here, back here. This is the Erie. The trolley company used to haul Fabricoid products down to the Erie. Well, the trolley, or well, the Erie built this spur from where uh, Myron Lumber used to be, yeah. and went back by the poor house and all through the Lake Street apartments, mm -hmm. and it came out here. You don't need them. We can make money, and you can save money. So the trolley company sued, because you're killing us here. And the judge says, you're right. They're killing you. Here's a dollar. Way it goes. So that was another nail in the coffin for the trolley company in 1917. Here's Glenwood Park. Only a nickel anywhere in the city.
and that's where Grand Goodwin Park was. Now, once we get going, you, you see how the red line, that's because 52 has been rerouted. As I said earlier, in 1903, state was buying up the roads, and that's when they started realigning and doing all this uh, construction to them. 52 and 32 weren't done until the late 20s. I don't know why. I really don't. But Any questions? I, I do. I have a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> I um, I worked at Tarquette out in Valesgate. Yep. And there was a railroad line yep. that ran behind the building. Um, I don't know how old those buildings were over there because it was Tarquette and Star and Mountain and then some other building. But was that part of the railroad line? That's part of the old Newburgh shortcut that came out from uh, down in Harriman. And actually, the Grand Line until you get to I think Highland was the shortcut until they built the Grand Line. That's what's called the Metro North Line of today. Mm -hmm. And that ran up there. When they cut that out in the late 30s, they worked it from Valesgate Junction down to Tarkett. And that track is think it's still in there. Yeah, it, 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 and it, it, the, it the is. And the old Newburgh branch is gone, but the track to go in there is still there. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So now we're going to head out to the town of Newburgh. And that's where the Glenwood Park was. There's a new firehouse there. I should update this picture. But. And you could, this is a slight grade. If you, if you, you, so that's that was one of the things with the where the wreck was. The guy just blew by the the signal. He was coming down the grade too quickly. So again, we're over here. This is a great picture too. This is a. Near Winona Lake. So we got the present, the past, and the future. <laughs> now you're out of the city, right, right? Yeah, we're just out of the city, though. I think you said in other programs it's a trolley in the city, right? But when it goes out of the city into the country, that's where you can classify as an interurban. Yes, when it connects two, two communities, it's an interurban. Yeah, so technically, this is actually an interurban. An interurban. The trolley was in. Port Jervis because it only served Port Jervis. And Milltown was an interurban yes. because it went to Goshen. Yes. But the cars remained the same. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's just right. a general, it's general, general, general knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. went out in the country and it's a lot like that in the Midwest, but Ray put me onto that. That's why I bring it up. He's a guru. <laughs> <laughs> Easy dog. This is a piece of trolley track. That used to be a hot dog place. Yeah, that was a hot dog place. It was a diner. Yeah, it's still there, right? Yeah. Was a bus barn. It was the bus barn too. Yes. So, uh, I can't remember. You think? Yeah. And there's a glass company back here. So, so this track was probably in front of Bill Dillon's house. He was uh, in politics okay. in the town when we were in the fifties. Okay. Oops. I went. I think I went too fast. No, I didn't. Okay. Okay. There's so much going on in this one. Look at these lunatics hanging Four. off of the thing. I've seen pictures in some of the other, uh, like in the Midwest, people are on top of the roof. You know, there was no OSHA back then. You know? yeah. But what's interesting is this is, 52 was rerouted this way now, over this way. See this pole leaning over? That's that. Hmm. Huh. Oh. oh, wow. Huh. Now, when they redid this bridge over there a few years ago, they did tear up trolley tracks. They put a temporary bridge over the old bridge. And I went down a couple of days, but I, you know, I couldn't go every day and torture these people asking them for stuff. And uh, But there were tracks there. Did they save any of it? No, or? no they, they just, just paved over them. They just paid, paid back over them. So here's the down there at night with at night with picks and shovels. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way the roads are falling apart now, we might be able to see them again. Yeah. 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 Another view. It was very nice of them to cut down all the brush for me to take these pictures. <laughs> so that's that bridge pay? between Upper and Lower Winona. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Algonquin Park's over here. Yeah. This is a great picture too. So the, so the shoulder is 
pretty much, and that lane to the yep. left is the trunk. The tracks were probably here on the oh, yellow line. Right here? Oh, okay. Now the poles are generally 100 feet apart, except for on turns and near turnouts where they were closer. Mm -hmm. Used to come this way and came back around. And DuPont, this was a uh, gunpowder works until like 193, I think, 194. Tell me they shipped over the trolley line too. Mm, yeah, right. More oh, gunpowder yeah. while you're yeah. riding a trolley. Anybody got a match for a cigarette? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Oh my God. Oh, I'm surprised there I don't remember more that explosions. One. I don't remember. Yeah. Oh my God. Smoke too. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Everyone smoked the yeah. thing for sparking falling dynamite. Yeah. I'm shocked. Uh, yeah, there wasn't more explosions with those things. Over here is the bowling alley, and old South Flank Road. So the trolley used to go back that way. This picture, I would love to have gotten a picture of the trolley crossing a little bridge over here. This is behind Joe's Pizza, and it came out in the parking lot to go back onto 52. So it's behind Joe's. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. that. So over here, there was a crash, small one. Nobody got hurt. A lot of people shaking off somewhere in here. And this stars for the halfway house, which I'll talk about in a moment. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they, yeah. a few years ago, these trees were complete. Yeah, Patton Road. These yeah. trees completely blocked the house. So it was very nice of them again to take down. This is known as the halfway house, and like what we think of a halfway house isn't the same as what a halfway house was back there. This was a hotel, and all hotels had uh, a bar. A bar. So we'll see what happened at the halfway house in a little bit. Orange Lake halfway house. Lakeside House Hotel. Lakeview Hotel. Lake Grove Hotel, Orange Lake Hotel. This place, we, we cannot fathom how many people used to come to Orange Lake right. for the summer. We, oh. we cannot. And when I tell you, like I said, this other guy called me a bad name. Unbelievable. And this is Rock Cut Road. Yeah. yeah. Did they call it something else? I couldn't see. Forrester. Oh. Okay. So Orange Lake Amusement Park, the trolley company refurbished the park in 03, and it closed during the Depression, and it was dismantled in 41. All this is true, except for a part between here. I posted it on Facebook, and two people really helped a lot. One of them will, will see what she did for me. When the trolley company went under, so did the amusement park. They owned it, but they owned the grounds. They didn't own the concessions. So... Ray's Cotton Candy, Doug's Fish Bowl, Eric's Shooting Gallery. They're like, wait a minute, this ain't right. You know, so there was a big legal to do. The park did reopen, but there were no more trolley cars. So that was around 1928 or 29 that happened. There was like a lull where it was completely shut down until the lawsuits were filed and everything was hashed out. So here's an advertisement for the Orange Lake Park. And Sunday school and society picnics and all the stuff you can do, but right here, no intoxicating beverages sold on the grounds. That's what the halfway house was for. <laughs> Load up, boys. <laughs> now, drunkenness was really bad back then. Real bad. Which led to prohibition, which is another story, but Another article I had, I just can't keep adding articles. They would, they would have, they had, they didn't call them security guards back then. I don't remember what they called them. Thumpers, literally. That you get drunk and you're out of line. Thump. Don't want to know you. Thump. Have a nice day. Thump. And here's the park in 1903. And it says casino, but that isn't what we think of a casino. It meant more like a dance hall or something. So the park is in, in this open area here, right? Yeah. This is all open. And all the, all the, this isn't 
open yet, though. This is what they're thinking about. So the, it isn't filled in with all the rides and stuff yet. And this is on the East Shore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now this, the lady, when we saw the picture before uh, Stephanie Law, the, her Aunt Alice had her son draw this for me. She was almost 100. I met her once. And she was sharp as a tack. And she worked there when she was a teenager after the trolley company went under. And this is the map how she remembers how the park was. Wow. Now this wasn't trolley times, so there's a lot of things missing. Still, I mean that's pretty amazing. Yep. She had a drone. She had a drone. <laughs> I do too, so I can know where to put them in order. All the order. Like you'd like one. There's a 15 timetable, 1915. Oh, wow. Tickets for the rides. Wow. wow. Where did they come from, right? I think Walter gave them to me. Walter? <laughs> Chris Kasky? Yeah. And was that all year round, the amusement park? Yes, this was open all year round. No, the amusement park wasn't, but the lake, because they had skating and boating, you know, the, the ice boats. Mm hmm. The Glenwood Park, they bragged about how they were an all-year all park. These guys must have shut down. Were the concessions open when they had skating? Do you know? I, would, I don't know, though. Yeah. I really don't. Maybe all the hotels couple. and stuff, you know, yeah. in the halfway skating house. Skating was really big. I mean, it would freeze over back then. Mm. Not now. Yeah, no. 1919, <clears throat> pamphlet on the lake. And I figured this is 1922 to 23 because the next paragraph is talk about all the brave men returning from the war. And I was like, you know, we can't, I, we don't have the time to read it, but the, the stuff that went on there was just incredible. Tickets to get there. So you came up by the railroad or the day line or stuff yeah. in Newburgh too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And got on the trolley yeah. and went that's big business. Oh. Mm. Eric gave me this one. <clears throat> this is from the article says February of oh eight. Not a twelve foot snow bank. Oh, man, that's what's brutal. February's that's what we used to get. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we are at the park. Does everybody remember when this used to where, where the there was no traffic light? Where the Catholic Church and the firehouse there? Yeah. What a horror show that was. Yeah. That was bad. So they took this piece of the road out and they put up the light and made it a true T intersection now, or a four way intersection, not a T, a four way. And that was the waiting room. That's how you got in. So the waiting room was back here, this house over here, these two houses. When I first, actually prior to getting really into the uh, presentation and looking, the Sentinel, I think that's the local paper for Newburgh, they had a uh, letter to the editor. The streets in Orange Lake are horrible. OL Avenue is brutal. Not only do we have these potholes, now we have these big pieces of iron sticking out of the street. And I, now I know what it is, but they paved it over, so I'm never going to see that again. But they were popping out there to the well, track. You, you're right, Doug. They might. We might regress. Based on the way our roads are falling apart, they might come back out. <laughs> so here's more people at the park getting ready to go. Oh, wow. Skating rink. No idea. I wonder if any of the buildings were right, no. where hotels exist uh, over, over in that area still. Yeah, there's still houses that are hotels. Yeah, well, hotels. Yeah. So this one is the Penny Arcade. This is a theater. This is the view from the skating rink. Airplane ride, dance hall, just hang out. This was their main attraction, the Ferris wheel. Mm -hmm. And the lake. The 
Jackrabbit and the Ye Old Mill. Whatever they were. There must have been some crazy ride of some sort. Okay, this is where the guy yelled at me. In 1908, a local newspaper reported that an average of 15,000 to 20,000 people a week in that season. On opening day and other special events, there could be 40,000 people at the park and Orange Lake. Now, that doesn't mean they were all there at the park at one time, but they were at the lake and all those hotels. So the trolley's going out in two years, and in 21, they're making 21 daily trips there. You know, if you knew the hotel yeah. situation and what they're, mm -hmm. like they do on the railroads, they have the summer home book and right. tell you how many rooms there were. Yeah. And if you had some things that had access to that kind of information, that would really go a long way because yep. you've got that many people staying there and on board, in addition to people coming up for the day, you know, yep. it would make a lot of sense. You just don't know how many hotels yeah. there. Boathouse, pavilion. Bandstand area. These guys look like they're at the halfway house a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the lake itself. Yeah, it is a nice lake, even now. It's, it's not that deep. You know, it's only like 10 feet deep, I think. Can you hear me since you wake up? Yeah. No, no. My friend lives on it, really. So, this is how the road used to go. 52 used to go through the park, and now you can't make a left here to get in. Right. So this was built around 1928, and it's still pretty dangerous, you know, over here especially. And there it is. I'm gonna use the old trolley around. I wonder if the Lakeview um, restaurant and tavern is one of the hotels mm -hmm. in that, that yeah. area. Is that old? Oh, yeah. I, I'm just curious yeah. because yeah. they're right on the Yeah, it was on, it was on the map there. And they, have, they actually have articles that I sent to Ray about the trolley online. I tried to print them out or whatever, and all about the amusement park yeah. and everything. And on, on their website, it says historic stuff, and it tells you a lot about yeah. this place. Huh. It's really nice. Yeah. So this is Pine Point Hotel, or Pine Point, uh, I think it was a hotel. Like Frank Sinatra sang there, and Jimmy Dorsey, and all these guys from oh, way back when. Wow. before they became super famous. So here's Rock Cut Road, and right around here is the town line with uh, Montgomery. Is that the lake right here? Yeah, this is the lake here. So that's jutting out in the lake? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that man-made? Was it dammed up like sure. a swamp? This was, it is a man-made lake. Okay. Orange Lake is a man-made lake. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, where the hotel was, that would be... That don't know. Don't it's have a man-made lake. Maybe yeah. left. I mean, that kind of odd shape. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, in 1908, this was filled in. This is by Orange Lake. 52 here. One of the articles that Doug had sent me. They they discussed how they filled this in, but another article I had again. I can't put everyone in it. Said if you cannot afford admission to the park. And the rides, just take the trolley after a hard rainstorm from Walden to Orange Lake and ride over the two trestles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. What was it, 21 cents? Yeah, whatever. But it was like, <laughs> 21 cents. Apparently, it sink. It was, oh, yeah. it was tough. <laughs> it was nice. Now, this is a new story I, I had with this one. A novel a way to apprehend poachers. This is 1899, so this is going to be a tough one. Back then, what we call back then what we call gunpowder was called smokeless powder. What we call black powder was called gunpowder. So we got to think in that. So these two guys were shooting rabbits. Well, for 52, what we call 52, and the game warden sees them. Not only does he see them, but he sees these huge clouds of smoke from the guns going on. He sees them throwing a rabbit in the wagon, so he can't catch them until a trolley car comes along. The game warden jumps on the trolley car and arrests the two guys for shooting the rabbits. Ten dollars each. They had three of them. Oh, big fine. 
Now we're in Montgomery. Now remember earlier in the presentation, I was talking about Mr. Martin and what a charming individual he was and mm -hmm. the deadly consequences of the 1911 strike. There they are. This happened near Rock Cut Road because of the strike. They, they're trying to blame it on um, the freight car went past the uh, past a siding through a misunderstanding because of a storm. Okay, so I live back here, down in here, and this is old South Plank Road. There's a lot of old South Plank Road you see. That's the way the road, obviously the way the road used to be. So over here is by the aqueduct. It's like 465 foot elevation. When they built the new road, by the time you got here, it's over 600 feet. The hill goes like this. We'll see it in the next picture, but even a, tro a trolley car can climb a grade much better than the steam locomotive, but even that's pretty tough. So they built, you know, that's why they went this way instead of a more direct route, which we'll see in a second. And I think back here there's a real old house. That might have been a trolley stop, too, I think. Forever, I could not figure out where this picture was. I just could not figure it out. Like I said, I look back here. This is an old, North, uh, old uh, North Drury Lane. And one day I was going to Walden, and I looked to the left, and I looked to the right, I looked to the left, and I was like, Wiley Coyote, and the light bulb went off. I said, that's where it is. So this gentleman is standing here. The trolley car is here. And the other one is back here. This is where the aqueduct is. And the trolley car would have went to the left. And the trolley, yeah, they went here towards my house, Doug. Right, okay. So you can see, this is... That's quite a grade. It's going, quite right? a grade. Yeah. Wow. This is where the other, uh, this is behind um, that closed down bar, I forget, and then the welding oh, yeah, place. Yeah. Yeah. So the road used to go that way. So when it cuts around that mountain, relative to Rock Cut Road, where does the trolley duck around the hill? Because that, that hill starts almost at the light to go up the hill. Yeah. So it has to duck. If you go, yeah, a little bit to the left. To the left, yeah. it ducks that way. And then comes back and around. And comes back around yeah. on the other street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It be, you, it's like a Aunt, not Aunt Boys. What was that other guy's place? The, where the abandoned bar is, by Stone Castle Road. Yeah, just yeah, before. Just past. Just it, depending yeah. on your direction. Yeah, I my grandfather picture. built that. Yeah. The triangle. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. They used to have uh, my grandmother used to cook, and they used to bring up um, people from the city to entertain. I love that. Oh, nice. Thank you. Is there still a building here? There's still a building yeah. here, yeah. It closed for some kind of accident. And they named it the triangle because it was on a triangle Bar piece of land. And they built on triangles 52? On, on 52. Yeah. I don't yeah. know exactly where it is. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't it called the East something? It was, it's it's it was originally the Triangle Inn. Right. Which makes sense. Because yeah. yeah. the guy that owned it was a friend of my son's, you know, in past. There's this a fabrication place yeah. right yeah. next yeah. to it. Yeah. Right. Right before you turn to the cemetery. Yeah. Now we're near Brea Road, and there was a, uh, this was a boarding house, and there was a trolley uh, stop here, and they had a little barn, but. They used to have a beautiful porch on that yeah. building. Yeah, they tore it down, that's what he said, that was the trolley stop. Yeah. Okay, so this is like 1922, I think. I should have wrote it down. And they're gonna shut down the trolley system. Now, the funny thing is, yeah, funny. When these trolleys first started, especially in Newburgh and Middletown, the people in Newburgh and Middletown couldn't wait to get them. The people in Goshen and Walden didn't want them, especially the merchants, because they figured, wait a minute, all these people are going to go to those big cities, big cities. When it came time to shut them down, 
Walden and Goshen wanted them open. Middletown and Newburgh couldn't get wait to get rid of them. <laughs> Funny story. <laughs> so here's, here's the cemetery. Yep. And it's hard to read, but the electric cars from Walden to Newburgh passed the gates. And because it was Victorian times, they called it the Silent City, not a cemetery. Oh. And, they, that, and this article, they said that hey, they built this. I always thought this was the road, but it wasn't. No, well, that's roughly where the trolley was going yeah. in that area. They the built this parallel. as the. They built this as a uh, boulevard for serenity. For, they had a whole thing in the in the pamphlet about the um, cemetery, Silent City. Silent City. Is that a road also on the other side of the trolley on the right, or is it that that is the road? Though. That is the road. That's, that's, so that's fifty two. That's fifty two. So this was a second mm -hmm. road for the for the cemetery. Yeah, it wasn't even a road. It was just, just a, an access. Just the trail to think about your. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I've had. Always confused me that picture. Now I think I got it. Yep. Russ Thank made, you, Ray. Russ made this one too. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes sense. Wow. Just like a, a walking path. Yeah. Reminiscing or mm -hmm. whatever, reflecting. Reflecting, sure. Wow. And this is a, this one, I had to blow it up, and if I blew it up anymore, it'd get worse. If I kept it small, you couldn't see. So, over here, you can see the cars. Yeah. And over here is the side street. I think that's for their water plant, the Walden Water or Sewer Plant, one or the other. Way back there. That's a trolley. That's a trolley car. Oh. That's people waiting for it. So that's about where that building is down there. Yeah. There. And the people are waiting here. Yeah. Wow. Coming into Walden. A little blurb about how exciting Walden was at the time. And this bridge was removed when the South Plank Road was rerouted. And it's across from the ice cream place. Yeah. Coming into town, when there was a lot of a lot of rail work in the. Uh, Rail going on in Walden at one time. That's right. That's the name. All right. <laughs> now we go. Here we go for old yep. scalper. This was the trolley barn at one time, the car barn for the night. I uh, was practically stalking the owner one day, and he walked in. I waited for him to come out. I scared the hell out of him. <laughs> yeah. Questioning him. He goes, whatever was in there is gone. They completely remodeled this building. There's nothing in there. And people have come by before and asked me if they could look around. And he says, there's nothing in there to remind you of a trolley. Now, Old Scalper, the young lady mentioned Old Scalper. Why do they call it that? Oh, we'll talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> trucks apart. Really good reason. <laughs> really in good 1903, reason. the trolley company to decided to buy a... Um, Double decker trolley car. For the day. Oh. Mm -hmm. So they drive the they great fanfare. We're gonna bring more people to Walden. We're gonna bring more people to Orange Lake. Great fanfare. People are lying in the streets to watch a double decker trolley car till they got the old scalper and the guy <laughs> stopped and he wouldn't fit because nobody from the trolley company bothered to measure to see if it would fit. So I was told that the top of the trolley car that they cut off is now a porch and a home in Orange Lake. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I was told. That's cool. Here's the Walk Hill Valley Railroad, which is now the in park. the park. I always thought it was this sign, but it was this sign. Right there. This sign was for sale a few years ago at a auction, uh, not auction, an antique store in New Paltz. And the guy found out that I was into the trolley. Do you want to buy it? I haven't paid that much money for cars. <laughs> what do you want it for that sign? He said, no, thank you. He goes, I can give you 40% off. I still haven't paid that much for cars. So is it still up there? I don't know, Doug. He wanted $2,500. But well, he did let you take the picture. Yeah. As far as he didn't charge it. Yeah, he <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't touch it. You can look. Jeez. <laughs> The top of this uh, sign says, Cooking Made Easy. I 
don't know what the bottom says. Sure. Maybe it was pre-cooked meals. <laughs> Take it home. Yeah. First McDonald's in Orange County. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this story is about the ladies of Walden because they're going to shut down the trolley again. And this is late and how they want you to go to Newburgh so they go to Schoolmakers, so you go to Goldberg, so you go to the fancy stores. And these buildings is the end of the line. So the trolley would go up Orchard Street, stop here. And these buildings were uh, either warehouses or storage or both for uh, the knife factories. So the trolley would stop somewhere in here, guy would get out, flip the pole, and drive back by Old Scout and park the car for the night. Did they get freight from there too? Yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't, the, isn't that apartments now? I don't know. I, it looks like it. Yeah. It looks like it. Well, I suspect they got their power here too, because there's no way the power is going to come all the way from Newburgh, and I believe they had a small plant in Orange Lake also. And I hope you enjoyed the ride and watch your step getting off the car. Thank you.